This latest study into the ice of Greenland reveals a key factor, the melting point, the threshold beyond which it disintegrates irreversibly with implications for us all. Locked away inside the ice is a massive amount of water. At the moment, the rate of snowfall roughly matches the rate of melting. But what if the Earth is warming up? The researchers assume that we'll pump out ever more carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas. At the moment, there are 370 parts of the gas per million. If that rises to 550, which many studies predict within the century, then the average global temperature may rise by 2.7 degrees centigrade, and we'll get this effect on Greenland, a shrinking of the ice. Now, this is only a simulation and will take a thousand years, but the trigger for it could come much sooner. It is quite likely we will pass the threshold. And the result of that would be that the Greenland ice sheet would melt, not overnight, over a long period of at least a thousand years, but the consequence of its melting completely would be that global average sea level would rise by about seven metres. What would a seven metre rise in the oceans mean? Well, Bangladesh and the Maldives would be swamped. Anywhere low-lying would suffer, including great swathes of the Amazon rainforest and parts of Florida. But there'd be a huge impact closer to home as well. Much of eastern England would be threatened. So what are we going to do about it? Well, so far the Kyoto Treaty, negotiated seven years ago, is the only international effort to reduce greenhouse gases. But key countries haven't signed up to it, and Britain's chief scientist warns it's time they did. It is very, very important that uh, the administration in the United States, the government in Australia and the government in Russia all sign up to an international process. No country is internally going to solve this problem. We have to get all of the actors onto the international stage. Now, the scientists behind this research admit they could be wrong or that the assumptions they've worked on are too pessimistic. But if they're right, they want governments to listen and take their warnings far more seriously.